Good afternoon, Britannia, and hello to the rest of the world. Welcome to 2C TV and the first live update of the day. England is falling, and Westminster has fallen. This video is about what's been going on over the last, well, quite a while now, but uh, this week. Let's talk about what's going on now as we speak. We're going through the Easter period, which coincides with Pakistan Day, yeah, or Resolution Day. And our establishment, which is supposed to be the protectors of the Church of England and Christian values uh, that shaped and formed a fundamental structure of society in the Western world, have decided to once again pander to what we call diversity. But there is a problem here, and in this video we're going to talk about that because they've decided to fly the flag, the Islamic flag of Pakistan, from the top of Westminster Abbey. Let's get on with the show. All right, you beautiful freedom fighters. Uh, I'll get your reaction live uh, during the live stream as usual if you're watching this live. Uh, so this is all about what happened now. Um, that's the pa um, flag of Pakistan on top of uh, Westminster Abbey. So they say, well, Pakistan has links to uh, the former British Empire and Commonwealth. And it's Pakistan Day. We should celebrate it. Somehow they've decided to, to actually use, well, I mean, the, the flag that Pakistan has, and let's not forget, pa Pakistan is, at, I mean, in terms of governance, it's not a real place because it's, it's an acronym. Uh, I always make that joke. If a flag of a different country has a symbol on it that goes against the, the exact opposite of our values, and you combine it, so the flag of Pakistan has literally its Islamic symbols on top of a Christian building, not just a Christian building, Westminster Abbey, the heart of Church of England, basically. This is what we're dealing with. Let's go to the video first and then we'll react. Really? This is, by the way, happening on the same day as uh, us discovering that Abdul Ezadi, that nutter that did the acid attack in Clapham Junction, uh, who uh, apparently converted to Christianity, obviously not in a real way, in order to just prevent deportation, he had his burial today, uh, and uh, of course, the burial was Islamic. So we all knew that was not a real conversion to Christianity anyway. This is about the structure of the country whether you go to church or not, whether you are a practicing Christian or not, whether you're an, a secular person living in a Christian England, you still have to support the values because this is the fundamental structure of our society. And the fact that the, the, the building itself, Westminster Abbey, didn't even have the, the flag of England or the Union flag next to it. It was just the, the Pakistani flag. That creates more problems anyway. So Tommy Robinson reacted to this, saying a Pakistani flag flown at Westminster Abbey for Pakistan Day at the weekend as international aid from tax money to this terrorist hellhole rose from £41 million to £133 million. They bring a heroin and obviously a lot of the toxic culture uh, into our country and our political establishments obviously are rewarding them with flags. Again, this is not really even just about every individual Pakistani person. It's simply about the values and the Islamic values and the, those backwards cultures that are already being welcomed into, into this country. Forget about all that stuff or forget about the grooming gangs. It, this is simply about the basic values and the fact that Justin Welby, uh, someone who's supposed to be protecting as Archbishop of Canterbury, protecting Church of England, I think time has come. The time has come for Justin Welby to resign. It's time for Justin to go away because you're completely undermining not just Church of England, but Christianity in the West, but of course, our constitution. We are not, so we have not separated church and state in this country because our state is linked to church, whether you like it or not. The crown is the protector of church. Of course, we have King Charles who's saying that he wanted to be the protector of all faiths. Because he wants to be diverse, he wants to be inclusive. Yeah, this is what you get from inclusivity. If it were any flag that didn't have, for example, symbols of a different religion on it, you could say, well, firstly, you shouldn't do it on Westminster Abbey anyway. Just do it next to Parliament Square, right? We've done it before. Flag of India, whatever. But now, 
a different religion, not just a different religion, a religion that hates Christianity. You do it on top of Westminster Abbey? Are you kidding me with this? It's not the only thing that's been happening. Of course, during the Easter period, that's the other thing, by the way, Easter period is important to talk about. We've got, we've got the Holy Week coming up. Easter period is now obviously uh, happening at the same time as Ramadan. And Ramadan is what we are seeing now, which is uh, with, despite thousands and thousands of mosques that we have, we are seeing, for example, Trafalgar Square, which is near Westminster Abbey, seeing this. <laughs> During Easter period, do you get uh, Christians blocking the roads, do mass prayer? Firstly, if they did, it's their country. The values are Christian. They could be able to, but they don't. They go to church. They close the door. They do it in private. Despite thousands and thousands of mosques in the Western world and in this country, we continue to see this show of strength, show of confidence. It goes against our values. That's the point. It's not against the individual Muslims. In fact, I've had conversations with a number of individual Muslims in the West, in, the, in London, who've said they don't even like this. They don't like to do this. This is undermining what created Britannia in the first place and all the Western European countries. It's not just that. It's not just the church. It's also Metropolitan Police pandering. It's all about pandering. This was the post done by the Metropolitan Police on X. So Mark Rowley joined, joined officers and staff from the Association of Muslim Police for Ramadan, Iftar, at the New Scotland Yard this evening. We've had these images. Of course, uh, Islamic uh, police officers, part of the Met. We had uh, Mark Rowley himself mingling, drink reception, of course, drinking water, not alcohol. It's Iftar, it's Ramadan, and uh, yeah, this. While I said, that this country's constitution is directly linked to church, and that's church, Christian church. In terms of our institutions, we expect secularism. From the BBC, from the NHS, from the Metropolitan Police, we do not expect them to get involved with religions. It's not their job. Stop this nonsense. Stop the pandering. If you want to protect people, despite their religions and skin color and gender or whatever, just do your job as a police officer. Protect the communities. You don't need to do pandering. Westminster Abbey didn't need to do pandering to bring down the England flag and the Union flag and replace it with the Pakistani flag. If we have Pakistan Day, and if we say, well, we're part of Commonwealth and all that, if you have to do something, put it on the Parliament Square, near the House of Parliament, next to the Union flag. Always next to the Union flag, if you have to do it. Not on Westminster Abbey. We know why they're doing this. The funny thing is, do people like Justin Welby and the establishment of Church of England and the Metropolitan Police, do they know what's happening? Or do they think it's just uh, they're being inclusive towards diversity? Because apparently diversity is our strength, right? We have a bunch of people who are basically plotting to do harm when it comes to our constitution and the rest of the people in the establishment are complacent they're absolute idiots let's get your reaction we've got a couple of super chats first and i'll get your um live chat as well uh, first the uh, super sticker support thank you very much uh, morwenna and also marsh cohen from israel saying bye bye uk it was fun while it lasted as a citizen of the free world thanks for everything you've done to fight slavery and spread education but this might be the end everybody in schools focus on mistakes of the past which by the way applies to every single nation and every single empire they do not teach our kids all the beautiful things that came from britain from england and the british empire 
liberal democracy, the justice system, the modern justice system, the education system that was supposed to actually educate people, as Mosh Cohen is saying. Free trade, respect for rule of law, due process, all that goes against the values and rules and regulations of the Islamic side. We don't have peace in the Islamic side. We've seen that. It literally has the sword as one of the symbols. It's forceful. We know that. Now it's happening in England, in France, in Sweden, in Germany. Hannah from Israel, thank you for your super chat, saying Church of England has replaced uh, Jesus uh, with Muhammad, uh, the Gazan, the Gazan. Um, I mean, there's, there's this point, by the way, let's not forget about those who started to do pandering in the name of being uh, woke and progressive because they wanted to hide something. Let's not forget about the fact that why Hollywood, why the NHS, why the BBC, why Church of England decided to become woke, Disney, all of them. Why did they go woke? Why did they become so progressive in favor of everything from BLM to rainbows and everything else? Because it's been exposed over the years. So many of those individuals at the top of those organizations, they had something to hide. It's overcorrection and it's damaging the rest of us because we have to obey. Initially, they said multiculturalism is supposed to be embracing other cultures and the other cultures will join in and embrace our values, common values and become British again and everything else. But now they say, no, it's our job to abandon our common values, embrace their values, but up to a point, because if you do too much, then it's cultural appropriation. It's a lose-lose. The, the reason that the, an element of what we call the globalists want this to happen and open borders and mass migration is also because they want to create this mush. And the whole point is not to necessarily replace us with the Islamic ideology is simply to completely have us valueless. You become a blank canvas. And then that's when they can do, you know, whether it's the Fabian Society and all the other nutters, then you can basically have individuals with no values and they just become part of the machine. And then you can simply have, you know, from the continental perspective, initially with the Euro United States of Europe, then obviously a more exaggerated way in a few decades, a potential one world government or whatever, that way everyone will be the same, but not in a good way. It's not equality. <clears throat> you won't own anything, but you'll be happy. Don't know how they can guarantee happiness, but good luck with that. Super chat from Anthony saying thank you, saying that they are doing this to provoke us into retaliation. They want civil unrest. Well, they're gonna blame us for it anyway, if it happens. Bandsman, um, probably from Sweden. Uh, saying, um, when will you realize that civil war is coming if you want to keep your freedom of speech and your democracy? How else can we actually protect it at this point? Wow, how disgusting is it to see Trafalgar Square like this? We have been invaded, or the laughing stock we have become. Our country and culture is crumbling from within. As I've been saying this for some time now on 2CTV, you don't even have to worry about tanks crossing borders anymore when it comes to invasion, when it comes to your values changing. You just have to get on a boat or a student visa or as a relative dependent. Richard says this will be a response to British farmers out in force with union flags out, plus the build up to St. George's Day. I am slightly concerned about what's, what could happen in the lead up to St. George's Day, which will be on the 23rd of April. As you guys know, we're all gonna be out in London, in Westminster, Whitehall, 23rd of April from, I believe, 3 p.m. But of course, people are gonna be around from beforehand. I have a big fear that with the division that the media and the establishment have been creating, the reporting of that day, even before it starts from the media side, is going to be blaming us for causing division they're going to say it's a bunch of uh, racist people going to London to celebrate St. George's Day. They're going to find the tiniest mistake. If you have one or two people in that crowd who want to infiltrate it and cause chaos, they're going to say, look, they're all targeting the police and they're all causing chaos. That's exactly what is going to happen when it comes to reporting from the media on St. George's Day. And you're going to have our politicians from Sadiq Khan and Keir Starmer to Rishi Sunak and all the other nutters. They're going to do their 
regular annual video statement saying happy St. George's Day. And you know what they're going to do. They're going to say this is the time for inclusivity and being progressive. City Khan has to do it because uh, he's going to get a lot of criticism if he doesn't do it. He will do it. But he's going to say this is why I'm proud to be English. He's going to claim that. You're going to see that. But is he going to be around St. George's Day in Whitehall? Is he going to be walking, marching with me and Tommy Robinson and a couple of others? Is he going to be around? He wasn't around when the, when the farmers came to London. Keir Starmer wasn't around when the farmers came to London a couple of days ago. Massive crowd of farmers. They, they, they claim they care about the farming community. Rishi Sunak, I mean, he's prime minister, fine. What about the representatives from the, the government? Anybody? Did anybody come to Westminster to show support to the farmers? Or were they scared because the farmers were flying the union flag? They claim to care about the farming community. Clearly they don't. Going back to the Super Chat, I uh, believe I missed a couple. Brooks says, thank you very much, by the way, saying, will you yourself go to church this Sunday? Uh, I will actually be there. Well, it's Easter Sunday, of course. <laughs> um, Cohen again says, by the way, as an Israeli, do not place my flag on your beautiful side. We appreciate the S out of your support, but either put your flag or none. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. This is exactly the point. It's the same thing with the mentality of Israelis since the 7th of October. They've been saying, give us support, show us vocal support, just like the Iranians who do the uprising against the Islamic occupiers. But both the Iranians and the Israelis have said, we don't want handout, we don't want your tanks here, we don't want your intervention, this is our fight, we'll do it, we're actually fighting your fight. Just show us support, don't attack us. The exact opposite is happening now. Neither the Iranians, the pro-freedom Iranians, nor the Israelis expect us to fly the Israeli flag on top of Westminster Abbey or Downing Street. This is the difference between this side and the woke tards. They're obsessed with any excuse to fly the foreign flags in our country. Idiocy. <clears throat> Narnia Railway responds to Cohen saying, uh, and all the Israeli people, God, peace and protection to all. Rosie says, our politicians have sold us out. There is no Christianity in the UK anymore. Do not vote for the traitors. They will allow millions in now. It is interesting because um, it, depending on your town and your village or whatever, in Middle England, you can still see every Sunday queues go into churches. But when we say Christianity is going down, we're talking about the establishment, undermining it. When Justin Welby doesn't care, when... Uh, the Prime Minister doesn't care. When the rest of the establishment linked to the Crown don't care. I mean, the King still has to be seen to go into church for Easter and all that, fine. He's doing his job. But, in inner London, urban London, there are a number of churches still, especially actually, ironically, a couple of Catholic churches when it comes to Kensington. They're still proactive. But I, I go around, especially around Sundays, not much is happening anymore. There's also in uh, North London, a lot of people are scared. They feel threatened. Just like uh, a group of Jewish people in North London who are scared to go to synagogues. You also have Christians being scared to go to their own churches because their area is now too diverse. It's not nothing to do with skin color. When we had, uh, I mean, uh, the, the vast majority of the, uh, the Jews who are from the Middle East, they also happen to be brown. Some of them. <laughs> Nobody cared. Nobody had a problem. No, no normal person, unless you're Adolf. <sighs> Unicorn, thank you very much for your super chat from America, saying the Muslim Brotherhood put this plan in writing a couple of decades ago to infiltrate and take over the West using our own values against us. Check out uh, the Farhad. Uh, she's uh, done an amazing research on it. Exactly. Uh, there, there's been a couple of plots over the last few decades, and it's all been exposed already. It's not theories. The, the, the KGB and Soviet Union, before the collapse of the Soviet Union, they started this plan back in the 60s to infiltrate our academia and create division. What we call the woke toxic um, poison and virus is that. 
Uh, you had the Chinese, obviously, uh, doing the same thing as on behalf of the communists. Now you have the Islamic side. They literally had Ben Laden and all these nutters uh, telling us what the plan was as well, 15, 20 years ago, saying we're going to send our soldiers to pretend to be asylum seekers and you're going to let them in. And of course, all the others, the Muslim Brotherhood and everybody else. And let's not forget, some of these stupid organizations have been funded by some of the globalists in the West because enemy of an enemy is a friend, like CIA. But the, the ones who are using it against us, like the George Galloway and all the other nutters, anti-Western side, they, they make it sound like there was no such thing as a aggressive Islamic ideology, Islamism, and, and those who want to take over the world. They make it sound like CIA, for example, just created it. No, no. Those barbaric animals were already there. They were going to do it anyway. And the nutters in the West, the globalists, and let's just say for the sake of the argument, the CIA types, they empowered them, some of them, like Mujahideen in Afghanistan, short term, for their own gain, and it backfired. But it wasn't the West that created aggressive uh, Islamic ideology. It was already there. Do you not remember the Crusades? I mean, we, no, we don't, but <laughs> you know history. It's been going on for centuries. They were always going to do it anyway. The CIA just gave them a bit of a boost. Terrible idea. <clears throat> Laura says, you're spot on, Maya. They are already planning something about St. George's Day, calling them for the far right. They can't let us celebrate one day when they have been on the streets for months now. I, I, yeah, why is it that the, the other side is allowed to, to take over central London every Saturday? Even if a group of Jews tried to do something on, on a Saturday, I don't know, just, just walk around saying we're Jews. Imagine the outrage you're going to get from everybody. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> super chat from uh, Marilyn. Thank you. Hi, Sir Maya. I'm not Sir Maya yet. At some point. Sir Maya, I hope uh, people of the UK um, must stand up, stand all and bring back Great Britain again. Uh, protect your country and your own culture. Do not let the UK to be an Islamic state. Long live the United Kingdom. Isn't it sad? We see it a lot on 2CTV. We have people watching this right now from Israel, from Sweden, from the Netherlands, Norway, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And the comments we get, the sympathy we get in support of our country here and the Union flag and the, the St. George's flag is coming from those guys. There are people in foreign countries to the UK worried about us. And then you've got a bunch of so-called white English Brits who are so woke and progressive. They've sold us out completely and of course the establishment as well at this point the people watching this and send us all these kind messages seem to be more patriotic towards britain than our mps in the house of commons this is why we have a problem when you have a when you have a swedish person or a danish person worrying about us <laughs> where is our people why are they not concerned how many of them are going to come to london for saint george's day we will judge that we'll, we'll see the crowd I don't know, in, in a normal situation, especially when it comes to this battleground that we have, we should expect 2-3 million people. We're not going to get 2-3 million people. No. Bury your head in the sand. Super chat from Canada. Georgia is saying thank you. 50 years ago in, in Canada, I was taught Canada equals multicultural and the US equals melting pot. Melting pot equals invite others to come, but expect to assimilate. Things have changed. <clears throat> um, and the last uh, super chat uh, again from Mr. Cohen. Uh, Muslim said, hey, what about the Crusades? Everyone who ever read history, by all means, where shall we start? <laughs> oh, especially North Africa. Um, let's not forget. The, the, the fight against us is on so many different fronts. You still got Marxists. You now have a new version, globalists, who are basically valueless. They just want to have corporatism ruling over us. Even when it comes to the threat against Christianity or Judaism, it's on different levels. In the West, the values are being undermined. In other countries like Nigeria, they are literally targeting individual people who happen to be Christian. They are taking away their lives. Nobody is saying anything. Of course, we've been reporting it and a couple of other independent media outlets. Forget about 
Westminster Abbey being taken over by the Pakistani flag, actual Christians are losing their lives. I mean, any moment, if the Is Is Israelis didn't have the Iron Dome, they would have been wiped out by now. Jews and Christians. But no, let's worry about uh, some mean comments on social media about uh, Islam. Oh yeah, Islamophobia, that's a, that's a big concern right now. Super chat from Laurie, thank you, saying, I'm so sad. What's happening, Maya? I want to cry. I don't want this to continue, but sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. Might have to, again, we don't want to advocate for this, but it might have to get worse until the rest of the people wake up. And again, this is not really some sort of call to action, some sort of uh, revolution. This is simply to wake people up before it's too late. Stand up for your country, stand up for your flag, stand up for your values. If you want to have a, if you're a secular person, you know, you say, oh, but I don't really care, I don't really go to church, I'm not Christian. If you want to have a normal secular society again, in this country at least, you can only have it under the umbrella of Christian England. Only Christianity was able to give us what we call secularism. You can't really have an Islamic state and expect uh, those who are not religious to be left alone. If you want to be secular, you need to promote Christianity in England. Tommy says Islam has conquered the West. Still going, still ongoing. They are coming for more land, more control, <clears throat> more Islam. Get rid of our treasonous Islamic king, Celia says. And we also have Dirk saying, I will call for the revolution, since you can't. Mostly for legal reasons, obviously. <laughs> I still had the, the Metropolitan Police calling me again this week to make sure I'm, I'm being a good boy. So I have to, I have to be a good boy. I, 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 can't, I can't afford get court cases. It's legal. <laughs> well, if I was an illegal migrant, I could get all these uh, legal aid, right? Millions and millions of pounds spent on legal aid. But if I obviously, if I'm taken to court because I'm mean and I'm harsh, I can't afford it. Doesn't mean I'm going to surrender. Doesn't mean I'm going to become soft, I'll still say what I say. I still say what I want. I'm just going to stay away from treason for now. <laughs> I don't want to be Oliver Cromwell or Guy Fawkes. <laughs> too much work. I'm too lazy. Super chat from Linda Stone. Uh, thank you, Linda. Saying as many buildings as possible should be flying our flag like they do in the United States. Why are we so ashamed of patriotism? This is the one powerful thing left when it comes to the Americans. Despite all the problems that the Americans have, ordinary American, some of them could be Democrats, some of them could be Republicans, ordinary Americans, they still fly the American flag outside their homes. And it's not intimidating. It's not scary. I've been to America as a tourist. I actually see it as a nice thing. It's, it's colorful, basically the same colors as the Union flag. They just stole it from us. You're welcome, Americans. It's not fascism. It's patriotism. Super chat from uh, Alien Tanner. Uh, Man United will win the FA Cup. That is the only thing we have left, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, do not bring football into it. You do it. Every time I talk about United, we get half the people watching unsubscribing. Don't do it. Also, no, Finbar is wrong. Chelsea United, it's not. It's going to be City United and we're going to take revenge. Do not unsubscribe just because uh, I'm a Londoner supporting Man United. Of course, I'm a Londoner supporting United. <laughs> you expect me to support the London team? But no, I believe uh, I'm going to be at Wembley, by the way. So uh, it will be City United and we'll take revenge and nothing will change. <laughs> Life will go on, <laughs> even if we lose. <laughs> anyway, going back to uh, Nina Super Chat uh, saying thank you. Uh, saying that UK have forsaken their Jesus, their Lord, many decades ago. True. They will say with pride, oh, we are not religious. God has forsaken them now. UK lost its identity ages ago. Please wake up. Please pray. Yeah, it actually started a while ago. It's just showing it now. That's the problem. <clears throat> Vix is right. Appalling, pathetic, insane. Justin Welby must be removed. Just getting going to retirement, J Justin. Nobody wants you anymore. Eugene says, Islamic Republic of Britain. How many times have I uh, warned everybody on this channel? I've been repeating myself a lot. 
My background, my family, obviously, being Persian, coming from Iran, it happened to them in 1979. Secular liberal society. 1979, paramilitary coup, Islamic paramilitary coup, Islamic occupation. Do not let this country to become like that. Do not turn Britain into another Iran. This has to be said repeatedly. Not just to Britain, to Sweden, to Germany. France apparently are fighting back, but uh, it's a little bit too late for them as well. We're at war, ladies and gentlemen. And this is not really, again, calling for treason or some sort of far-right organization. This is simply saying this is the fight for our values and our lives. Look what happened to Spain centuries ago when they allowed it to happen until the Crusades took back control of Spain. Spain could have been very different now. Where would we go without Benidorm and the cheap cocktails? <laughs> also, Benidorm has now been taken over by, uh, by the English. Woof, woof. <laughs> uh, one of our trolls, uh, Patrick, is having a meltdown in the live chat. So let's just put up some of his comments. You're fake. You, how lazy are you to not just type you are? It's just a couple of more letter, uh, 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 characters. Pa uh, Patrick also says, Shill. What else is he saying? Let's just copy everything he's saying. Fake AF. Brilliant. Is he saying anything else? Patrick says, fake journalism. <laughs> How can you do fake journalism? <laughs> this, the concept doesn't exist. <laughs> Journalism. It's literally whatever you say. <laughs> he also says, you're irrelevant. Oh, just type you are. You're irrelevant and pretend journalist. Well, what are you? You don't even have a face on your profile picture. What else is he saying? I just want to see what else he's saying. Because I'm kind of, I, I kind of like the trolls every now and then. It's kind of fun. The thing is, they don't know. They have to click on every video and watch it, which is more ad revenue for us. <laughs> so I like to keep them watching as long as possible instead of alienating them. Shut the F up, fake journalism. No, you mean journalist. What you mean to say is shut the F up, fake journalist. Try again. It's, it's okay. It's probably uh, autocorrect. His phone is fighting back. His keyboard is fighting back against himself. <laughs> so what? Really? Come on, be better. Why is everybody incompetent? Even mate, you can't even type mate, irrelevant mate with M and a number eight. What is this, 2002? It's like the early days of SMS. <laughs> it's just put A-T-E, it's not really hard. Okay, I'm bored of him now. <laughs> you always need to finish the live streams on a lighthearted note and make fun of some people, it's funny. Uh, bring back bullying. All right, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We'll come back shortly. I think I'm going to, well, I've got a meeting now, but I'm going to come back around 5-ish, uh, 6 p.m. We're going to talk about the lockdown rule breakers in the House of Commons. MPs, I know it's still going on, by the way, all those lockdown cases. They're getting away with it. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to later on talk about uh, the UK borders being in chaos once again. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maya 2C, and we are the media.